All right, now welcome back to your balance eyes of entertainment. Now, time for us to talk about business. If you're not person where they out there, you just start your business like a few months ago, or if you're not person where they out there, you they plan to start the business very soon. This one at the time where you need to actually stay glued to your TV because we get the cadet guests in the house where we're gonna give you tips them on how to make sure that your business they very very cadet, especially. With this social media now, people don't they actually create a lot of um, increase for inside their sale. That they use social media to they make money for their business. While some they use and they make money for their business, others not even know how to use them at all. And that's why we won't actually teach you or, other, or rather tell you things to do on how to use social media to your advantage as a business person. So if you get business, um, listen. And if you're not person where one going to business, you have to listen up because we get this gadget person in the house. Um, she not just Omomo Ibe, and she not sales guru. She sabi work concerning sales. And say any business where you get to you, if you want to increase your sales, she sabi work on top and well. well. Now she they self motivated on top sales and marketing, and she they actually consult for a lot of business people. Now at the first point of contact, she they engage with clients, and she they provide them better, better advice on how to make their business they very, very casual. She they approach every customer with the sole purpose of serving their need, whether they make phone and that they enjoy a um, better, better experience for inside that business or whatever way they, they put their hand inside or where they don't actually buy um, from. Now, join me, welcome, just, um, um, just Omomo Ibe, where you go tell us more concerning how to maximize social media um, for your benefits. Good to have you in the house. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Now, I might just quote one or two um, information about micro, small, medium enterprise, that's not the MSMEs, because according to the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, in collabo with the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, they come outside and release a report for 2017, and they say as of 2017, over 40 million businesses, small, medium, and um, uh, micro, small, medium enterprises were registered, over 40 million where uh, 40 million was generated from um, small medium enterprises that were actually registered and right now with the here say this um smes they actually contribute to 84 percent of jobs mm -hmm. we we'll get for nigeria so that means uh, the smes nine they actually contribute globally they help on top of the gdp for inside the country and a lot of these businesses started from home a lot are still starting from home True. a lot of them are also women and men for inside the industry <coughs> excuse me now, looking at how um, social media don't come become a big factor nowadays, we they see say, some people are still finding it difficult in terms of um, having a certain stand on top of social media. We don't say right now technology is moving forward. You don't need to have a shop, Actually, a physical shop right yeah. now, even though some people still get them. But online, it's thriving. Um, but for Nigeria, people, they still get challenged using social media. If you tell us why. So you, you mentioned a statistics earlier about 40 million naira. Mm -hmm. That's a mm -hmm. very small, small amount of money compared to what we can actually generate. I, I think a couple of weeks ago, Naira Metrics brought out a report saying that about 12 trillion naira was made on the internet in the last one year. Do the maths. That's mm -hmm. a it's lot like of money. So it means that if we're SMEs and what we're doing is that amount, it's, it's a tiny, it's winning bit of what we should be doing. And why? I feel like the major reasons why we're having challenges is we have not gotten to understand what the lifetime value of one customer is. So I'll, make it, I'll use a typical example. You sell creams, right? And somebody comes to you and buys black soap. The same person that buys black soap from you today will go to another person and buy face cream. Will go to another person and buy shampoo. Meanwhile, you, the business owner, sells all of these things. So as a business owner, the focus is to say, how can I onboard one customer and get that customer to go through the life cycle of all my products and services? That way, I can maximize the wallet share of one person per time. So if I'm spending money to acquire one customer, I'm sure that that one customer will be able to go around and I can make the best amount of money at each point for each customer. If as businesses, that's our focus, we can drive as much money as we can from our businesses using social media. And one of the major things I see people really struggle with is not understanding the basics of an online business. You see somebody who is shouting, sold out, uh, we're sending here, we're delivering Delivers. here, and you think, oh, that's exactly what you need to go and do because they are doing it. You have forgotten that that person has built a foundation on this online business and has grown over a period of time. So as a startup, if you're just starting, the first thing is get the required knowledge. This industry I'm going into, what niche should I face? Niche is that target market that you know you can connect with. 
because every business owner has his own unique um, um, personality or unique style. Your job is to find somebody who you know you speak their language and connect with them easily. That way, you build your products, your services, your solutions around those people. If you speak, it's easy for them to connect. E.g., I'm a mother, right? I know that I can sell things to mother, mothers effortlessly because I can speak their language. I can create messaging around my products and services that connects to them. If mothers see it anywhere, it's easy for them to say, oh, that's a mother like me, I connect. Let me pay attention to her. They may, they may not necessarily have to buy. Then the third thing is, there's a place for growth. You don't start today and hammer tomorrow. Anybody who tells you that is a pure lie, it won't work. Except you want to do buy one, get one free, and after, after a while, you ask yourself, so what have I been doing? Because there's the making money sharp sharp, and there's the growing a brand. If you grow a brand, people will buy from you today, they'll come tomorrow, they'll keep referring pe people to you repeatedly. And that's, you can only do that if you get the foundation right. Now, you, now, plenty of Yibo, you they speak. But it's on a pigeon show. You oh, they okay. speak plenty of Yibo okay. for us. <laughs> Pardon me. But you know what? <laughs> now, make we talk about um, getting that foundation right. Now, yeah. even looking at the statistics, um, we know say a lot of small businesses they actually start up every single day, and most of them they start up and they not even, they not even live to see three months or even four months that they actually fold up. Now they come with the idea of, I need to get customers. Then they go with a lot of knowledge. Is it that there is something where these businesses know they actually get right, or the economy not just they favorable to some businesses? So my sister, the economy has no business with running a business on social media. I, and this is me being honest, our economy has nothing to affect you. There are no policies yet that says, as a small business owner, you know if you make money on top of social media. But the major problem is that us startups are focused on the end goal, which is money, rather than what do I need to start. The, money, the thing when you need to start an online business, not be capital and knowledge. But the competition, they're very, very high. My sister, competition is necessary for growth. Any business, when you're doing competition all day, eh, you, are not, you are not going to chatter a very long... Let me, let me give, you, give you a typical example. Any business, when you do today, you're not day new. If you want to sell clothes, person don't sell clothes. Mm -hmm. If you want to sell bag, person don't sell bag. If competition day it means say person don't do and person don't do successful, your job is to model what the person don't do successful in, not copy. You know, so there's emulation and there's um, mm -hmm. imitation. Mm -hmm. They are two different things. Your job is to emulate. This person don't do X, Y, Z, don't do successful. Now the thing when she do be this. Now the language when her target audience, they enjoy be this. Now the style when her target audience, when she they talk to her. How can I emulate my own? So that I know that this same target audience where I want to serve, they can just use this same model and then I'll be able to enter into the market. So like I said, capital will be the problem. Now, knowledge when you need. Now, you talk knowledge and you talk about a model, remodel mm -hmm. or, um, yes, or emulating. emulating a particular model we don't work. Mm. Now, a typical example where if you give, now using brand influencers. Good. Now, people don't come outside. That's when it be the rain. Yeah. Hey, everybody use one brand influencer, snap picture, put them for Instagram, mm. tag the person. You go get 50,000 likes, give one, give one. But people don't come outside, they realize, say, it's beyond... Using putting a picture or using a video of brand influencers. Tell us other ways where a business owner feel utilize the relationship where they get with any brand influencers on top of social media. Okay, so let me explain what I usually teach in my SMS formula. I have a, pro a, a program where I show people everything you need to do to sell out on social media. It's called okay. the SMS formula, social media sellout formula. The basic thing is first, who are you? What do you do for people? Because value. if I enter inside value proposition, that's what it's called in English. If I enter inside a gynecologist hospital, I did go there because gynecologists are gynecologists. Mm -hmm. So as a business, the first thing that will be your value proposition, what thing you want to do for people, even if they sell clothes, not be clothes you they say. You have to sell something with the experience when the customer won't buy. E.g., I want to become a slave queen just by wearing XYZ kind of clothes. I want to hide my tummy just by wearing XYZ kind of clothes. I want to increase my confidence just by wearing XYZ kind of clothes. So your value proposition needs to be tailored in a way that it's a solution that the average person who is a buyer will see and say, make I go check this person. Since he's saying they will help me do XYZ with this cloth or with this hair or with this food when they sell. That's the first thing. The second thing is the branding. People would buy things that they feel like they can relate with. If you see Zobo now, we get label, and Zobo we no get label. Which one you go buy? Mm. It's not just the labeling; it's the brand. What do I want people to see me as? Things as basic as a logo, 
a social media template such that every time you put out a post, they will see that this template belongs to this business owner. And there's consistency over a period of time, say, now this thing be this, so, now this person be this, make it a watch. Then the third thing that will help you move really fast on the social space is videos. People, I said to people that in 2020, there'll be one million views of videos on the internet per minute. Meaning your ideal customers will stop at your content because it's a video. So our job as business owners is to key in and key in very quickly. With a video, it's easy for me to look and say, ah, make I sweating this person won't talk, whether it will make sense or not. It's either they want to criticize you or they want to pay attention. Either way, they're not going to ignore that video. Mm. So it's easy to go faster. Even Instagram or social media algorithm favors videos faster than mm, pictures, pictures or posts. Now you talk mm. videos. But because... please, I mean, not move away from your own topic because yeah. I, I really want us to talk about them um, because some business people now they feel say using brand influencers is the, the way. way. Yeah. Because they remodel other people's uh, model where they actually say, work for them. Way, <laughs> so really, yeah. as person where we say you don't date for inside the street for a very long time, is it really the will? So with social media influencers, it works. However, the social media influencer will only give you traction if you on your own, you're a brand that people want to, if you have done your homework. Mm. Say I come your page now, nothing they do, everything they empty, everything they scatter, mm. scatter, everything they jagger, jagger, different picture. You use color red to the next one, purple. Then you go and use one influencer. Because of people, uh, that influencer, they will come your page, or they will come to the page, what thing be this? They will follow you immediately. Stay. They're not going to stay. Mm. So you can only do that strategy if you have put your home in order. When you now put your home in order and then you're not going to use that influencer, there should be a follow-up strategy. And so if you're picking an influencer, the first thing to ask yourself is that influencer in target audience, I did my target audience. The language where her target audience they hear, now the language where I won't speak for my business with that. So let's say you're trying to get a brand influencer and you sell um, food and you okay. want to use somebody who is an artist. The artist's follower, not normally, they're not interested. It's like interested they're going to talk about food mm. on his post. It won't work for your business. Mm. So understand who the target or the followers of your influencer is, mm. whether or your mm. own target audience, so that the language where you go speak, it go work if they come your own page. Beautiful. I like that. Beautiful. I like that's that. very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very strong. I want to ask also about using videos because now I don't see and say um, a lot of people they use videos are trying to use it from a sensual point of view. Mm. Take for example, you they sell hair. I know some people they sell hair, I but when you. they're doing the videos, <laughs> they're showing their bum. They're being sensual. That's the word because they're using you. all forms of body language. To and a, a lot of times we see they have twenty thousand. If they views, sell for 50, them for no, some no, 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 time, no, they get views. We don't know no. how it relate. It translates into sales, <laughs> which we cannot even, which we cannot quantify. Yeah. But a lot of times it can't be like say those people that it can't be like as we talk. Yeah. It be like say that they sell because okay. when you look at their viewership, yeah. fifty thousand. Yes. Yeah, so now, man, at least after that fifty thousand, not because one or two ten percent go even pay go slide mm -hmm. into your DM. Mm -hmm. So one thing I always say to business owners. Another person's yardstick is not what you used to measure exactly. your Exactly. Mm. Do not be carried away by the number of views, the number of comments, the number mm. of... Don't. You can't be because you are not there in the person's business. I know it's difficult to say don't pay attention because... Yeah, because that's a word on the outside, right? That's what's you'll be there. pressured. However, the big goal is what are you focused on building? How long... Be, you have to be sincere with yourself oh, as a business owner, my people. You need to be sincere with yourself. How long will it take you to build that in your building? Be prepared to go the long haul. Mm. Because anybody, when they sit, they when they hammer, if you go and listen to how they started, it is not that thing you're seeing now. Mm. Exactly. They've had their own long share of waiting, mm -hmm. struggling, so many things. Thank so, you so much. pay attention to your own hustle. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you very much. So beautiful. you actually enter uh, inside the house, talk more about maximizing social media for sales. Now, if you want to get more information concerning all the things which you don't actually put on ground, I know so you get a particular training coming up very soon. Yes, we just did that over the weekend, but there's a oh. program called the SMS formula. That is the foundation for any business. If you want to start any business today or you have even started and you're struggling, with that formula, it takes you to a 12 video models that shows you exactly what to do at every point in time so that you're positioned. Mm. When you're now positioned, you cannot start saying, how do I do social media influencing? How do I run ads? Because even if you run ads and your business is not positioned, you go waste money. Mm. So where people so think get, get your... And then All you they need to do is say, yes, they can just send me a DM my social media handle or visit our website, just ebay.com. Or even call my phone numbers. My phone numbers are easy, they're displayed. I don't hide them. Yeah, so so your your social media handle now with nah. Just eBay underscore consulting. J-U-S-T-I-B-E 
underscore consulting. consulting. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Very you. informative. I mean, so Thank much. You. So Thank much. You. I need to hold on Thank to you, you because when we come out, all that break is still going to hold on. Thank we'll you. We'll come outside the studio. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.